Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning and welcome on this, the Lord's Day. The Lord be with you. It's good to be with you on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning uh, to uh, pause from our activities of the week and to center ourselves once again in worship as we uh, seek the face of God and, and um, to um, experience the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. So it's good to be with you. A special welcome to those of you who are here as guests this morning. We're grateful for your presence and pray the Lord will bless our time together. A few announcements. A thank you to Suzanne Howe, Rachel Straley, and Sandra Weidman for helping to lead us in worship this morning. Uh, also, um, a uh, thank you to our Bishop uh, Peggy Johnson, who is standing up front. Peggy's in pink here. Okay. Remember that movie, Pretty in, Pr Pretty in Pink? Anybody? So it's good to have the bishop with us. She's had a busy week. She had the Peninsula Delaware Conference, Eastern Pennsylvania, and last week she was with the bishops all week. So she uh, is ready for vacation. So it's it's uh, wonderful to have her with us. A uh, reminder that following the service, we will be um, having a time of fellowship down in Fellowship Hall as we say um, a farewell to Brandon. Hopefully he'll be back on occasion. Uh, he'll begin his ministry at Cedars United Methodist Church beginning on July the 1st. So I hope you'll come down um, and um, uh, send him off with a, a warm um, handshake or hug and enjoy some cake that's following the service. I'd now like to invite um, Rachel Dominic. Rachel has an announcement concerning our Vacation Bible School. Good morning. We are now two weeks out from Vacation Bible School. Uh, this year's theme is Hero Central. I think I have most of the leader volunteers that I need, which is wonderful. Thank you, everybody who volunteered. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> But I can always use more helpers. So if anyone would like to even do a day or two, you know, I can always, always find a place for you. Today, the Safe Sanctuary meeting, everyone who is even helping with uh, Bible school needs to go through the Safe Sanctuary training. It was scheduled for 11, but we have the reception, so I'm pushing it back. I will be there at 11.30. Um, if you can't make it until noon, I'll stay through noon, so we'll just make sure we get everybody covered. Thank you very much. I'd like to now invite Ginger Morley to come forward. Ginger is the president of United Methodist Women. Good morning. Pastor Dave is setting out my props. Um, United Methodist Women are asking for your help today. We would like to fill these baskets with items needed for the summer mission trip to North Carolina. The baskets are located at each entrance to St. Paul's. Um, the items are listed in the grapevine. They were in the clarion. There's also a little um, note, a little list on each basket of the items that are needed. You can also take a picture with your cell phone. So if you're out and about, Target, Dollar Tree, wherever, and you can pick up some of these things, gloves, masking tape, paint rollers. We really would appreciate your help. Um, some of the things might be a little more difficult to find, like the mask and the knee pads. Dwayne Powell uh, frequents Route 13 at Newcastle from when he worked there at the Air Guard, and he found knee pads at Harbor Freight for $3. So if you're out and about Newcastle around town, please try to purchase some of these things on your list, and we thank you very much. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to invite Roger Scorziello to come up. Roger and Rachel Dominic were our lay delegates to annual conference. And Roger would like to give a, a brief summary of our experience there. Good morning, St. Paul's. Uh, Rachel Dominic and myself, Roger Scorziello, had the privilege of representing St. Paul's United Methodist Church at this year's 2018 Peninsula Delaware Annual Conference. It was held in Princess Anne, Maryland from May 31st to June 2nd, and the theme was Leading as the Followers of the Way. 
The Peninsula Delaware Conference of the United Methodist Church is comprised of approximately 800 lay and clergy members representing 81,000 United Methodists and 434 churches uh, from Delaware and the Eastern Shore of Maryland. It was part also of the Philadelphia area, which includes the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference headquartered in Valley Forge, PA, and the Peninsula Delaware Conference office is located in Delaware, uh, Dover, Delaware. The conference has con uh, consistently been at the forefront in its efforts to improve race relations and has made the issue of inclusiveness a top priority. I have to share a story what can happen if you let God into your heart, into your mind, into your body. As I was leaving the dormitory, heading to my car for breakfast, a young man in a trench coat, it was raining out, was pacing around the sidewalk and greeting people with, and myself with good morning. He mentioned that he was staying in the youth dorms and I was like, uh, okay, you know, like, I don't know this kid. Um, so, and then I left it at that. Um, then as I was getting in line for breakfast, I saw the young, same young man again in front of me. And now that I realized that he is a uh, United Methodist youth, I struck up a conversation with him. His name was Isaiah Carter. He was from the Marshallton United Methodist Church. He then introduced me to a couple of adults from his church, and I invited him to sit with me, and we talked about several things about our churches uh, over breakfast. And what a genuine, open conversation I enjoyed having with this young man. As the conference began, there was a presentation elaborating all the good works the Pendel Conference has been doing locally and around the world through UMCOR and the Congo, and the Congo Partnership. The United Methodist Women also are celebrating their 150th, 150th anniversary this year. They were highlighting their historic roles on society and social justice. Uh, UNW's focus this year are economic equality, climate change, 25% reduction in school arrests, advocating for maternal and child health. At conference, there were 11 resolutions proposed. Almost all the resolutions passed without much discussion. R7, the resolution to invite discussion and sharing of biblical study materials on LGBTQ issues was withdrawn. And on the last day of conference, R9 was introduced, a resolution to urge unity in the face of schism. At heart of the resolution was the wording, we strongly encourage the General Conference of the UMC to resist schism and express openness to diverse perspectives and matters of human sexuality as we prepare for the special session in 2019. An amendment was proposed stating we strongly, strongly encourage the General Conference of the UMC to maintain the Book of Discipline as it is written. A lot of discussion for and against was held, and with a 50-50 split vote, the amendment did pass. At this time, a moment of personal privilege by Chelsea Spires addressed the conference, proclaiming that she had decided to withdraw her name from a list of appointments and to licensing this year, or until her LGBTQ friends and colleagues are allowed to openly take clergy vows. Chelsea said she will wait to be appointed and she will work until all re really means all people are accepted into the United Methodist Church. In closing, this is Rachel Dominic's second year and myself, Roger Scorziello's third year representing St. Paul's at annual conference. We are thankful for the opportunity representing St. Paul's and in doing what we hope is pleasing to God. At conference each day became more encouraging, spiritually uplifting. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> hope. conference each day became more encouraging, spiritually uplifting, hope, and on the last day, emotionally draining. Moving forward, try to remember what Peninsula Delaware Conference mission statement is, cultivating communities through our call, connecting, acting, leading, and loving. And by the way, the young man Isaiah that I mentioned earlier, that Roger mentioned earlier, he was in the adult dorm heading home with one of Marshallton's adult leaders. Roger said hello to him, and he said, yes, that's Roger, he's my friend. This young man made Roger's weekend. God is good. Thank you. I'd like to invite you to stand and welcome your neighbor. 
to this morning's service. And uh, if you can keep it brief, a brief welcome. <laughs> Let us now prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to this morning's prelude. Friends, will you please rise now and join with me in our morning call to worship. O Lord, speak, and we shall be made well. Let us now lift up our voices in praise as we sing together our opening hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing.
pray together. O Lord, light of the minds that know you, life of the souls that love you, strength of the thoughts that seek you, help us to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may fully serve you, in whose service is perfect freedom. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Please be seated. And now let us join together in our morning Psalter lesson, which is a responsive reading of number 700 and 45 in the back of your hymnal. Psalm, Psalm 10. God, lift up your hand, forget not the afflicted. Why do the wicked renounce God and say in their hearts, you will not call to account? You indeed see, you note trouble and vexation, that you may take it into your hands. The unfortunate commit themselves to you. You, you have, have been, been the helper, helper of, of the, the orphan. the arm of the wicked and evildoers. Seek out their wickedness till you find none. The Lord is ruler forever and ever. The nation shall perish from God's O Lord, you will hear the desire of the meek you will strengthen their hearts. You will incline your ear to, to do justice to the orphan and the oppressed, so that, that people on earth may strike terror no more. I'm not Joe Gloyd. We're reading today from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 28. You may follow along in the Pew Bibles on page 158. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Have the young people come up for a minute? Do we have some young people? I see a few. Hi. Not a big crowd today. Come on up, guys. Hi. Hello. It's okay, you don't need to run. It's not that exciting. Welcome, guys. I, I had some things to talk to you about today. Uh, we're going to hear today a little later on... Um, about Jesus calming a storm, and it's a short little story. Uh, basically, he's out with his disciples in a fishing boat, 
And a big storm comes along, and they are very afraid. And they wake up Jesus, who's sleeping in the back of the boat. Can you imagine sleeping during a storm? And they say, give us a hand here. And so he stands up and calms the storm and says, don't you guys trust me? Didn't you have faith? So I thought, what did that boat look like? So I went online, and I found a picture, and this is a photograph of what those boats look like. This is an actual photo. I don't know if... You know, anyway, um, this is not an actual photo of Jesus and the disciples because that really would be a miracle. <laughs> this is people who built a boat that was just like the boats that they used back then. So it was not a very big boat. So if Jesus was sleeping in the back of that boat, you could just turn around and see him. He's right there, right? So they were really lucky that they didn't have to... Well, they didn't really have to pray, did they? Because there's Jesus, and give us a hand, please. So... Um, I was thinking about how, how lucky they were to have him right there. Now, today, of course, we can pray for anything we want, right? We can pray for guidance. We can pray for others. We can pray for help. Um, and I think sometimes praying just helps you think quietly about stuff. Sometimes if you just concentrate and, and think quietly and pray, it, it, it helps us. Do you ever get an answer right away? Does God ever say, gotcha? No? You, you haven't heard that, right? So that, that got me thinking, what if, we, what if prayer was like this? Let's, let's make up a quick prayer. Oh, what, do, what, is, what do people want to pray for? Pony? Chocolate fountain in the middle of the church? That would be a little messy, right? Yeah? All right. How about peace? That's a good one, right? Ever like peace? Okay. Let's have a look at the prayer. What if prayer was like this? And we said, dear God, let us help the leaders of our world come together and focus on peace for all mankind. And God said, and you go, okay, thanks. Great. What about another prayer you might want to pray? Get an answer to right away. What do you want? What do you want to pray for? No? Wisdom? Understanding? A good grade on a test? Yes. yes. God, we pray for wisdom and understanding and occasionally a good grade on a test. Nice, huh? course, we don't really get that answer, do we? Not all the time. But let's keep praying anyway, because I think it helps us, and it helps others, and someday it might just calm a storm when you're out in the middle of a lake on a boat, like it did in our story we're going to hear later today. Amen? Amen. Thanks, guys.
Please join me in the prayer of the day. O oh Lord, our refuge and strength, as the storms of life are raging, cause us not to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. O oh God, our present help in times of trouble, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, fear of change, even of the other, the stranger, alien, and one we call enemy, who share our boat and preserve us from all unbelief. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And join me in a moment of silent prayer. Amen. Friends, we now have the opportunity to pray for one another, <coughs> excuse me, as a church family. Um, our joys and our concerns. Are there any joys this morning you'd like to share that we might pray as one people? Yes, Ken. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Katie will be studying abroad for the next six or seven weeks uh, to England and France. We expect a little accent, a mixed one, <laughs> but uh, um, blessings on your trip. Sounds great. Others? Yes, Carol. John and Carol's 57th anniversary. And uh, they went up to sight and sound. Yep, they were up to see uh, Jesus at sight and sound. Judy? This is David. And his wife are expecting their second child. Wonderful. Big grin Judy has on her face, if you can see her back there. Uh, nothing like a grandparent. Yep, Elaine? Wonderful. Good to have you with us. Good to have you with us. How many do you have now, Elaine? Yeah, four great-grandchildren. That's wonderful. Other joys, yes. Nancy. Henry married Amanda this past Tuesday in Nashville, Tennessee. Wonderful, wonderful. We, you were down there. You were there, yeah, yeah, okay. At the courthouse, wonderful, wonderful. Did you honky tonk that night, or is that? <laughs> no, congratulations, congratulations. Yeah, other joys. Yes, Ken. Look at Nicole and Ken, uh, the twenty-third anniversary, and uh, Nicole's not here. She was here after midnight, so we made it. Okay. I don't know okay. She's, She's somewhere. She's at Children's Church. Okay. <laughs> Twenty-three years. Wonderful. Good news. Others, yes, go on. Okay, is it Harry? Harry. Carrie Dietz, yes. Oh, okay, Carrie, good to have you with us. You were the music director here at St. Paul's. Wonderful. Um, good to have you. Thanks for coming back. Yep, others, yes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, your, her name again? Marion. Marion Howell is uh, her 84th birthday today. 94, 94, okay. Right here, all right. <laughs> and she was your, she was your mentor? Um, okay, and what was she mentoring you in? Okay, admissions and faith. Okay, wonderful. Good to have you all with us. Other joys? Uh, prayer requests, any concerns that you have? Yes. 
Yeah. Prayers uh, for Charlene Foster and uh, for Les and Mary Ann. I had a chance to see Les. He's having um, knee problems, hip problems, back problems. So um, prayers for Les and um, prayers for healing. Other, other requests? Yes, Elizabeth. Okay, uh, Jason is on his way to a Bible conference. Uh, he, has some, he has some autism, so it's a little concerning, um, but uh, prayers for his safety. Prayers for, prayers for J- Jason. Yes. Yes, Bev. Um, Bev's high school friend's brother uh, lost his home in a fire and was burned, and he's without a home. So uh, prayers, prayers for his well-being and f- for him. Yep. A couple of other folks, I ask you to keep in your prayers. Shirley Reed, she is at the uh, Christiana Hospital in Wilmington. Um, Shirley uh, is in, has a, a leg wound that's not healing, and uh, so we pray for Shirley. Uh, also, uh, prayers for Dot Wood. Dot is now home from the hospital in Wilmington. And uh, Jim and Lucy Rawson, I visited with them this past week. Jim is under hospice care. And um, so prayers for, for Jim and Lucy. And also uh, for Roberta and Jim Conrad. Uh, Jim is at Manor um, Care in the Arden uh, building. And Roberta is in Forward Manor in Skilled Care. So they've um, broke her hip, and uh, Jim's experienced some, some dementia, so he's in the Arden Center. So, so prayers for the Conrads and for their daughters. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you uh, for this, um, this day. We thank you for your abiding presence with us. Uh, Lord, we bring before you these, th- our prayers, the stirrings of our hearts and minds, the joys, the celebrations, uh, the thanksgiving of uh, this earthly life, various events and anniversaries and birthdays and uh, travel. Uh, We thank you for the goodness of this earthly life. We also uh, lift to you our concerns uh, that we all carry. Uh, Lord, even in the silence of our hearts at this time, we we bring before you those in need of healing, um, uh, those Uh, Lord, who are in need of encouragement, you pray that you might even use us to lift them up. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, for the leaders of our nation and the decisions that are before them as they um, lead our country. We pray that you might grant them wisdom and discernment and that uh, your will might be done. We thank you, Lord, for our service, men and women. Uh, We give thanks to their sacrifice. We pray for them and their families and ask, uh, Lord, your peace uh, to be upon them. Lord, we bring again to you these prayers, even as we pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And now as we continue in our worship, let us remember these words of Scripture, that it is more blessed to give than receive. Will the ushers please come forward? Good morning, thank you. My name is Suzanne Howell, and I just wanted to briefly give a a testimony. I was born three months premature, weighing in at a hefty two two pounds, eight ounces. At birth, after birth, I was placed in an incubator which uh, delivered oxygen and also controlled my temperature. It was a piece of equipment that was purchased by the Delaware Hospital at that time. I was born in 1951. Um, research was being done around the country trying to understand what was happening to us uh, underweight babies. Um, It was discovered that the retina was deteriorating due to a high concentration of oxygen. So the very thing that was used to save our lives caused blindness. I uh, will fast forward to fourth grade when I went to law school from first to fifth grade and a teacher gave me a recording of the Nutcracker Suite and I learned the sounds of the orchestra and all the names of the instrument by their sounds and I wanted a flute and I begged my parents for a flute for years. We rented one in, when I was in seventh grade I went to P.S. DuPont uh, High School during my junior and senior high years and started playing flute at that time in seventh grade and I've continued playing off and on over the years took lessons at the it was then the Wilmington music music school for about 10 years I praise and thank God for the wonderful memory he's given me to memorize music I do not read braille music it's a very difficult uh, system or notation I want my music to honor and glorify my my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ whose face will be the first face that I will see. I can't wait. Thank you.
Friends, let us pray together. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, splendor and glory. All in heaven and on the earth is yours, and of your own we give you. Amen. Please remain standing as we join together in our hymn of preparation, It Is Well With My Soul. Church this day. 
Amen. Amen. This is volume 15 of 18 volumes of my Braille Bible. This volume contains Matthew and Mark. I'm reading from Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. If and when they, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a joy to be with you today. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I think I was here during your 100th anniversary a few years ago, and uh, you don't look a year over 50, so <laughs> I'm grateful to be here. And what a joy to be a part of this service. What a feast of music, can I just say? You are blessed. You are blessed with such wonderful music and wonderful flute and singers and piano and such a wonderful theme you've got going here about disabilities as well. Um, you are blessed people. God has blessed you to be a blessing. And so I hope that during this service today, God just plants in your heart something you can be doing that you might truly be an answer to someone's prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word. Your word is indeed a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. And we pray now as we consider this word, you just light a little fire in our heart. They will go from this place and light up your world. And now, in spite of me or through me, speak your word to your people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. I cannot read this passage in Mark without remembering a true story in my life when I used to run camps for children, deaf children, at West River Camp near Annapolis. And we were always teaching Bible stories using drama. And so if you can imagine, I was teaching this story about the calming of the water. And I had all kids dressed up in costumes. I had a kid like Jesus with a beard. And I had two kids that were the water, OK? One on each side were making waves. Everybody wanted to be the, the storm, right? And then there were other kids who were disciples. And so we were acting out this story. And of course, the, the kid that was Jesus was asleep in this homemade boat. And the disciple kids were uh, going along. And then suddenly the storm started. The kids with, the, with a sheet of blue were making big storms. And these kids rushed over to the Jesus actor and said, Jesus, don't you care that we are dying? And then Jesus himself stood up and said, peace. And the kids with the, the cloth stopped. You know, and the disciples said, wow. So I thought I was so cool teaching that lesson. That was until later that day we got into a boat. And I was the only one that knew how to row. Big mistake. First mistake. Okay, so I'd also had a big mistake in not noticing that the night before we had had a pretty violent thunderstorm. And the current out there on Little West River was not a mat for my rowing skills. And I had no help whatsoever. So I'm white knuckled trying to control this boat that was strangely going the opposite direction than I was hoping it would go. And I'm farther and farther away from the pier and I was really getting scared. And one child turned to me and said, where is your faith? <laughs> I was struck with, with something. <laughs> I wanted to kill her actually. No, but I was, 
I was just like getting my medicine, I guess, hearing someone preach back what I was trying to teach them. But, you know, right about that time, we noticed there was an old broken down pier near where we were floating without our control, and we end up landing on that broken down pier and crawling ourselves back to the land on this very precarious pier. And then, of course, the kids jumped out of the boat and came running back to camp and saying, Peggy tried to kill us, Peggy tried to kill us. <laughs> And I really wanted to kill him that, but, but really, um, you know, we go through things in life where we do experience fear and we do experience trouble and, and we read about this and we're being told once again to have faith when things are bad. And then the Romans passage is telling us that when things are bad, God's going to work it out for good. And all that is fine and good, but sometimes life, life's hard. And so today I just want to think about those two passages of where's your faith and where's your faith enough to know that it's going to work out and what can we do about it? Well, first, the good news, the very, very good news is that God's got this. God's got this. The late Billy Graham once said, and with a bit of jest, I skipped ahead while I was reading the Bible to the last chapter of the book, and it says that God's going to win. <laughs> He was talking about Revelation, you know. He was reading where it said that God will come and dwell with people and there will be no more death or sickness nor mourning. And God, God's self, will be the light of the city. So the ultimate good news is this. No matter what you experience in life, God is going to fix it all. He's going to have us all okay in the end. Maybe in heaven, but it's going to be okay. Because death is going to be destroyed forever, and there'll be eternal life and peace. But you know, folks, we don't have to wait until the last day. We as God's people can be bearers of good news right now where we live and minister and work. And I want to celebrate that there is a lot of good going on. I mean, Roger, I loved your report about annual conference. I, I've never heard an annual conference report before. And it was wonderful to know that there is good things happening as United Method is working together in mission and ministry. And I thank God for that. But also thank God for, for this church. I got on your website. And what good stuff you're doing. You're having vacation Bible school. Do you realize how many churches stopped doing that? And do you realize how many kids don't get anything anymore except for VBS? That's the one thing they get once a year that they'll know anything about God. And you're offering Vacation Bible School. Please do keep doing that. It's, it's really a lifeline to continuing the, the gospel out in this world to our next generation. And I love hearing about your blessing bags for homeless people. And I thank God for those faithful people in this congregation who have for many years served folks with Meals on Wheels. That is such a lifeline for seniors who are isolated. And I thank God for your upcoming mission trip to Princeville, North Carolina. Praise God. And I know there's people waiting for you that have been waiting and no one's helped them. And you're going to be an answer to their prayer. And I thank God for the United Methodist Women's First Aid Kits and for people who are donating tools. And I thank God for this church sending Brandon Harris out among you as a minister of the gospel. You gave birth to a new pastor. <laughs> That's a sign of the Holy Spirit, folks. It's a sign of the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for your support for the Rise Again Hunger Program, packing food for people. You fed people in Zambia who were looking for a meal, and you answered their prayer. In a million ways, you've been an answer to people's prayers, and in a million other ways, you can continue doing that and giving people the hope that God is with them, even in the storms of their life and in the, the why, God? And don't you care about us, God? You can be telling them by your actions, God does care. And so I ask you, what can you personally do? Something more you can do, something God's been tugging on your heart to do that you've been saying, no, God, I don't have time. No, God, it's too expensive. No, God, send somebody else. Listen to that voice, because that's the voice of God. God never gives up when God wants us to do something. And certainly there's always something more we can do. Every talent you have, every dollar you have, every resource of time that you have, God has given it to you as a stewardship for helping this world be a better place and bringing peace on earth. Because there's never going to be peace as long as there's injustice. And there's a lot of injustice in this world. So it doesn't matter what you can do. Everybody can do something. 
one of the um, things I noticed at camp, I, I went back to this camp I started where all these kids were <laughs> trying to kill me. <laughs> that camp, they had their 20th anniversary, so I went back for the celebration. And there I saw a, a developmentally challenged young person, and she um, has been trained to give dog massages, <laughs> okay? And she's been trained to be a dog handler, and uh, she went to pet grooming school, and. She's servicing the service dogs by giving them some, uh, you know, love and, you know, massage is nice, dogs like it too. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, everybody can do something. You can give a dog a massage, but you can do something. So don't ever think there's something you can't do because God keeps giving us stuff. So ask yourself, what is your gift? What is the gift that God has given you? So that's the good news. Now the other issue is faith. Faith in the midst of trial. Jesus asked the disciples, Where's your faith? Have you no faith? And Romans says all things work together for good. So can you believe when your heart is breaking that God's going to work things out? I mean, he says it right here in the book, so we got to believe it. But sometimes we just don't understand. We ask God, why did this happen? And, and things don't always just get better like you expect them to. And I do believe sometimes there's things that only can be healed in heaven. And I accept that, and I preach that, and I believe in that. But there's some things that do happen eventually that we have to have faith in during this life as well. One of the good things about getting old, which I am now, is I get to see a big picture about how time has progressed. And when I was in college, I was a music major. I was determined to become a music teacher, I would marry a minister, I would play the organ for church, and I would teach children, and I would probably run a church choir. That was my plan, and God laughed. You know, you tell God what your plans are, he can laugh. Because God really wanted me to be a minister, but I was kind of putting that off, you know. But while I was in high school, I was in all the plays, all the choirs. I also played flute. Not that good, though. <laughs> I played flute. <laughs> but anyway, um, as soon as I got to college, I was sure I'd get into the choir, and I was sure I'd get into all the plays. Well, guess what? I was really dwarfed by some much better trained, conservatory-trained cop kids in the class with me that had a lot better training and background than I did, and I didn't make the choir, and I didn't make the plays. I didn't even make the marching band, and my little ego was pretty squashed. But the next year I turned around and I tried out for concert choir again, and the second year I didn't make it again. I can still cry when I think about that. I was so disappointed, and that was especially disappointing because that summer, that summer, the concert choir was going to Europe to sing in the cathedrals in England and Germany. And I didn't get to go because I didn't make the choir. Instead, I got this dumb job at a camp. I didn't even want that job, but it was the only job that was available. And so I guess, nah, I gotta go to camp, I'll go to camp. But that's where God wanted me. You see, at that camp that summer, I got a real clear call into ministry. At that camp that summer, I learned how to run camp, which I ended up doing tons of camp later in my life, but I hadn't gone to camp that summer. If I'd gone to Europe instead, what would have been? Nothing. That would have been worthless. But God had a better plan. And it took me 20 years later to realize, oh, that's why I didn't make the choir. And you can actually thank God later for things that broke your heart later, earlier, because you knew God had a better plan. So I think that's what faith is. Faith is saying thank you for the times when you're disappointed and didn't get what you wanted and you prayed and prayed and prayed and it didn't get answered, ding, you know. Um, that means you really believe God's got this, God's working on your stuff anyway. Faith means going ahead with plan B when you wanted plan A. Robert Schumann is a great composer of the 19th century. He had a story like that. Do you know the story of Robert Schumann? He was a concert pianist, he traveled around, he was a virtuoso, he was a child prodigy. He really could make some money playing the piano. But he wrecked his hand. He was so worried about his fourth finger on his left hand. If you're a piano player, you'll know that that's the weakest finger on the, on the hand. You're, you're not dominant hand's fourth finger. And he put a pulley on it trying to stretch it and have it more strong and instead he, he wrecked the nerves in his finger and ruined his left hand. So the great concert pianist suddenly couldn't play with his left hand. That's a pretty big blow for a musician. 
despondent, he turned to composing. <laughs> and so he started writing music instead of playing it. And guess what? He was pretty good. In fact, we're still listening to his music today. If he had just you know, been a concert pianist, he'd have been dead and gone, and we'd never even know the name. But because of that great disappointment, that great suffering he had, uh, that turned out that the lemons became lemonade. That's how we show our faith in God, is taking whatever is our disappointment and making it an appointment. We show our faith by walking alongside us, people who have the same suffering that we have. You know, sometimes we have suffering that can be a real help to somebody else. You know, when you are walking the same road, you really have a lot more integrity to talk to somebody in, in a situation that's sad. Like, I, I'd never be really good in an AA group because I've never drank any alcohol. But someone who's been there, that's why AA is so powerful, because people who've been there and understand addiction can come alongside and be a sponsor for someone who's trying to be free of addiction. My family has a dear friends, the Briscoes, and Laurel and Muriel had a terrible tragedy that both of their teenage sons were killed in a car crash that was caused by a drunk driver who ran a red light, and they were both killed, both lovely young people killed, senseless. It was just such a devastation for them. And yet they became part of a healing team of people who started going out whenever the police got a call like this, they'd call the Briscoes and say, hurry up, we need you. Middle of the night, any time, night or day, they'd get in that car and go there and stand there with those parents who were grieving and say, I, I get this, I've been there. And so, you know, one of the things you might want to think about is what you don't like about yourself. <laughs> you know, what's broke? What hurts you? What's the thing you've been praying about? It never gets better. And maybe you can come alongside somebody and tell them, it's going to be okay. God's with you. I understand. There's strength as we stand together and find answers for things. Sometimes the answers aren't exactly what we wanted, but sometimes that's how God works, giving us the answer we didn't expect as being the better answer. Uh, one of the camps that I did found, I found this deaf kid camp, which later became a deaf developmental camp. But I also started a deaf blind camp. That's because I'm blind in one eye. And uh, like our flute player, I also had a developmental problem when I was born. Uh, for some reason, my left eye was just malfunctioned. It was uh, underdeveloped. It's called microophthalmia. And I've always felt a little blind. And so my calling has always been, I've got to find a way that people who are deaf and blind are going to get to feel the word of the Lord with tactile sign language. Because if you're deaf and blind, you can't see it, you can't hear it, but you can feel it. So we set up this deaf-blind camp. It's really a rock and good camp. There's just incredible giftedness in the deaf-blind community. And they witness constantly to the power of God in their life and the faith they have had because of and not just in spite of, but because of their deaf blindness. And so I really believe that part of my passion for deaf blind camp is because I'm also walking along that road and I uh, understand what it means not to see as well as everyone else. So I ask you, what suffering have you had that you can use for good? That's a hard question, but that's the nucleus of faith. That's what faith means. It means, all right, God, this is what I got. This is what I'm going to do about it. So St. Paul, you know, I met this church. Keep being the good news of the kingdom of God. Keep encouraging people in this church. Keep encouraging your wonderful pastor who serves you faithfully. Um, keep doing acts of justice and mercy. There's a lot of people out there in this world whose hearts are breaking right now. If you haven't noticed, it's a lot of oppression. And also know that faith through trust during shadow times of life is precious to God and that God can use this and everything you are and everything you've experienced to work good in this world. So keep shining your marvelous lights. And now at this time I'd like to just open the altar and your heart's altar to any response you want to have to the word from the Lord today. Ask yourself, what more thing can I do and give and be in order to be the answered prayer for people who are needing help? And then ask God, how can I have faith in things I cannot see 
and that God wants me to hang in there anyway and even help those who are on the same journey. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this, your mighty church, St. Paul's, and the faithfulness of your pastor here and the faithfulness of all the staff and the musicians and the teachers and the volunteers and the workers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the ways that they have been good news for the poor and recovery of sight for the blind. And we pray, God, you just give them a double portion of your spirit to go on from strength to strength in your service in this vineyard right here in Wilmington and to the ends of the earth that they might be shining your light in new and amazing ways and helping people know that God is with them and helping people know that God's got this. So, Lord, we pray all this now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you please stand now and join with me in our closing hymn, Stand By Me, number 512. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance among you and give you peace. Now and forevermore. 
Amen. Again, I'd like to invite everyone down to Fellowship Hall uh, to say farewell to Brandon. <laughs>